All right, so here we go with um, chapter 8.1, Sequences and Series. So for this chapter or section, what we're going to basically be doing is trying to um, look for different relationships that we might see um, with numbers on series of numbers, in fact. Um, so first off, we're going to start with infinite sequences. Um, infinite sequences are basically exactly what they sound like. Okay, um, an infinite sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. And we know that positive integers go forever. So in other words, it's basically saying that we can go from one, or we have different numbers um, in a sequence, and they're one, two, three, four, all the way to n, and then in fact they keep going. So it doesn't matter what um, n is, we got the first term there, second term, um, up to the nth term. And these are basically just counting those terms. So this is the first term. The one may or may not have an exact, or well, it, it'll have to do with the formula, and we'll get into that in a little, or a little bit more in a sec. Um, but just uh, so we have everything here, um, we're just again clarifying that the subscript indicates the term number and um, the domain. Okay, and basically it's the input. Okay, and now a finite sequence um, is just a uh, function whose domain is only from one to some finite number in. So basically instead of having these that a little ellipsis there that it keeps going, um, it stops. So it has a set number of um, of values in, in that function. Okay. Now um, write the first terms or two terms of the sequence. So we're just going to look at a couple terms here. Um, now you can actually think of this a lot like a function. In fact it is a function. Um, and that is simply stating that f of n is equal to a um, n, and that's going to change. And as that changes, these n's will change along with it. So kind of looking at an example here, if we're just looking at 1 and 2, well, if we want to know a sub 1, then any everywhere there's an n, we just replace it with 1. Same thing, if or, and then we just evaluate it out, and we get that the first number in this sequence is 1. Now moving on to the next one, if we wanted to do a sub 2, well, same thing here. Instead of a 2 where there was an n, or I'm sorry, where, instead of an n, we're going to put a 2 wherever that n was. Okay, It's basically just a placeholder. And then we could evaluate it out, and we find that 3 over 2 is the second number in our sequence. Now, you can do this for any number. Um, for example, if we wanted to, we could just say a sub 5 is equal to 2 plus negative 1 to the fifth all over 5, which we could, of course, then evaluate out. We get 2 minus 1 over 5, or in other words, the fifth number in the sequence would be negative 1, or I'm sorry, positive 1 over 5. Okay? And obviously, I skipped a couple there. We would have um, 3 and 4, um, a sub 3 and a sub 4 in the sequence in between these. But I wanted to illustrate we can find any of them if we have our um, kind of generic equation here. Now, if we want to write an expression for the nth term okay, of a sequence, basically what that means is they're giving us the first, in this case, five numbers in the sequence. And we have to find a relationship so that we can write a formula that allows us to find all of them. So first off, you just want to list out, well, we really we want to find um, one, two, three, four, five, the five terms in the sequence um, all the way up to n. So what we're going to do is go ahead and um, list those out and then look for a relationship between first a and a sub n. And then also just kind of um, something that can be helpful is looking for that relationship between the actual numbers in the sequence. Okay. Um, all right. So to do that, um, it's just going to take a little bit of guessing, and listing them out in this method is, is going to be hugely helpful with this. So we look for a pattern, and we see that we're adding 3 to each one of these. So that common difference is basically that for each one of these, okay, if we have a co or the 3 will become the coefficient of n. And you've done this before. You're actually doing this in elementary school where we're just looking for patterns and a way of relating. But now we're really looking for that pattern between the 1 and the 4. Okay. So 3n, well, if I want to go from, if I, say, for example, look at the first one there, if I take 3 times 1, I need to figure out how I can get to 4. Well, 3 times 1 is just 3, so I would need to add 1. And if we try that for the other ones in the sequence, we do 2 times 1, or I'm sorry, 3 times 2, 
plus 1. Well, that, in fact, does equal 7, which it's supposed to right here. So then we can write it generically as a sub n is equal to 3n plus 1. And in other words, this is basically the same thing as a function of n being equal to 3n plus 1. Okay. Now, recursive sequences are a little bit different. Instead of simply relying on, you know, just the numbers um, 1 through n, where I, it's actually going to rely on the number um, that came before it. So, if we looked at, for example, um, something like this, we might have a sub 1 is equal to 6. And then we have this formula here, a sub k, okay, so a sub anything is simply going to be equal to 2 times a sub k minus 1. So if we had, for example, a sub 2, which we'll see in a second. Oh, actually, we'll see this all in a second. So, um, And another way of writing that would simply be a of k plus 1 is equal to 2a um, sub k minus 3. Now, if that all that sub stuff is kind of getting you, don't worry about it. We're going to take a look at an example, and it'll clear everything up. So as I was saying earlier, if... What, or what we would want to do is if we actually want to calculate out a sub 2, well, a sub 2 is just equal to a sub 1 plus 1. And that plus 1 is going to be the important part there. So we can plug it in and say, well, a sub 2 is just going to be equal to 2, see that 2 right there, times 6, which was the previous term. So that's just a, this right here is just a sub 1, or a sub 2 minus 1 minus 3. And then we wind up with a sub 2 is equal to 9. That is the second number in the sequence. And then we could continue on. If we don't want to know a sub 3, well, that's just going to be equal to 2 times the previous number, a sub 2 minus 3. Calculate it out, and now we have a sub 3. And we can continue for a sub 4. a sub 4 will just be equal to 2 times the previous number in the sequence, a sub 3 minus 3. So if we want to list these out, we have the first four terms, which is what we were looking for, in the recursive sequence, 6, 9, 15, and 27. Okay. Now, the Fibonacci sequence, and you can look up stuff on this, is pretty sweet. Um, it has a lot of different applications, and that is probably the most famous recursive sequence. And basically, what it states is if we take 1 plus 1, we get 2. If we take if we then take 1, the next number, so that was for the first one, okay, if we wanted to know 3, well, that's just 1 plus 2. If we wanted to know the next number, 5, we would just take 2 plus 3. And you can go on forever. It's got some cool applications. Maybe check it out on Wikipedia when you get the chance. Factorial! That's not an exclamation point. Well, it is, but it also means factorial, which is a very powerful um, number tool. And all it states is that if we want to know n factorial, it's just going to be equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times blah, 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 all the way until we get down to 1. So, for example, if we had something like n sub um, 4, or I'm sorry, um, 4 factorial, well, that would just be 4, okay, times 4 minus 1, okay, times 4 minus 2, times 4 minus 3, and that gets us to 1, and that ends up being 24. And this has huge applications in number theory, probability, um, if you're trying to figure out how to win the lotto, stuff like that, um, it can have some really cool applications. So now we might get a, a situation where we have a more generic situation like this. Now, it looks really challenging, but if we just apply the definition, it's not going to be quite so bad. So the idea would be we expand until the terms match up. So we would look at this and we'd see that, well, we have 2n plus, plus 2. And then the next term, remember, we just subtract 1. So basically, we're going to, it looks a little bit confusing, okay? But let's go ahead and just say, if we, ch if we change these to k's instead, that this was k. Therefore, this would be k minus 1, or just 2n plus 2 minus 1. This would be k minus 2, or just 2n plus 2 minus 2. And you just keep going. And then we see, oh, well, the bottom is just going to be 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2. Again, this if this was L right here, then this would be L, L minus 1, and so on and so forth. And then we see, oh, well, these are the same, so they're just going to start canceling out. So all we're really left with is just this piece right here. Okay? And that would be our answer. 
Okay, go ahead and um, do your best to finish up the final parts of the notes. Um, we will go over the rest of this in class, but I expect that you will have um, examples and these definitions down when I see you tomorrow.